All right, welcome back. So the last operation for exercise number four, we're gonna learn how to use the 2D high speed peel mill to machine using one chain as well as two chains. So it's not limited to two chains in this one. We can actually select and use one chain. So the peel mill operation real quick, it allows for efficient constant climb milling and it's gonna go through and utilize the entire uh, length of your flute to machine the operation. It's a very nice, a little bit more dynamic than the blend mill operation. And let's go ahead and learn how to use that. So go to Toolpath, 2D High Speed, and select Peel. Now we'll make sure you have single selected and go ahead and select those two chains right here. So we're going to be machining between of them. Go ahead and select OK. And the 2D High Speed Toolpath Peel Mill uh, box will appear with all the options. Make sure Dynamic Mill is selected, Climb, as well as Peel. And as you can see from the picture, it shows you that the tool is coming in and just climb milling. So it's a little bit different than your previous blend mill where it's going back and forth in a rectangular manner. This one is literally peeling into your part and that's why it's called peel milling. So we're going to leave all the options here the same. The only thing I want to change is the extended entry to 0.25. And as you can see, the single chain only is grayed out. And that's because we've selected more than one chain. So in this video later on, I'm going to erase this and show you how to do this using a single chain as well. So I'm going to go ahead and place zero for both the stock to leave on wall and the floors. And we're going to leave everything off and link in parameters. Go to that. Go to absolute. Let's go ahead and change this to negative 0.5 and select apply and OK. And there's your peel milling. Now, if you really want to see everything uh, only that toolpath so it's not too crowded for you. Go ahead and select all the rest of the toolpath and select toggle toolpath. So now we are left with only our main toolpath that we're working with right now. And as you can see, the tool comes in and starts peeling into your part. So it starts going into a climb mill milling uh, and climb mills and peels uh, into your part. So let's go ahead and see that in the verify and place this in an isometric view for you and go ahead and press play. It's a little bit slow. Well, I have all my operations actually selected right now. So let me go ahead and exit real quick. Make sure only that operation is selected and select verify. There you go. Press play. And there you go. It's coming in. And as you can see, it is peeling. It's a climb milling and it's peeling into your part and make sure it comes in and exits a little bit extra to make sure it doesn't leave any burrs on the walls. So it's making sure it machines your entire part from start to finish. And it always machines perpendicular to both walls. All right. So that's with the two chains. With the one chain, it's a little bit different. So you're going to have to do a little bit different settings for the one chain. But as you can see, it cut our part very nice and smooth. Let me go ahead and exit this. And I'm going to show you now how to create the same thing using one chain. So for the one chain, I'm going to open up my uh, last uh, program. And uh, this is when I left it over for the contour for this. And I'm going to do this again using the one chain. So go ahead and go to toolpath again, 2D high speed and peel. Now this time I'm only going to select one. And as you can see, it allows me to press OK and go to the next operation. Now real quick, I'm going to come over here to tool. And one thing we forgot to do is to select the half an inch flat end mill because we are doing that. And 2D high speed toolpath peel mill. All right. So as you can see, if you've noticed with all of our operations in this exercise, we've used a one inch or a half an inch flat end mill. So that's really nice because it allows for minimal tool change, which saves you a lot of time. So let's go ahead and go to holder, keep it the same. For the tool parameters, we're going to keep everything the same here, except the entry and the exit. Now the entry and the exit, first I want to show you how it looks like if I leave it the same as pre previously. And for the wall, leave it at zero and floors at zero as well. And also, you're going to see that the single chain now is selectable, and that's because we only have one chain selected. Now, this is how you identify which side of your chain you want to machine. If you select left, it will select the left side of that chain. Now, remember, we've selected this chain, so we need to select the right side of that. And again, the right side of that, if you open up your drawing, it is 1.65 inches, so that's very important because we're going to need to input that right here in the slot width of 1.65 and make sure right is selected because we're machining the right side of our chain and that's all you need to do go over the link in parameters make sure you change the absolute negative 0.5 hit apply and hit ok 
and I'm going to go back and I'm going to turn off my previous three chains and even the last one right there to make sure that you only see this last chain over here. All right. So. So there you go, because the settings that we've created now, it basically is going to focus the entire chain, making it perpendicular to this geometry right here only. And that's why, even though we've told it, we want the entry to be a quarter of an inch and the exit to be a quarter of an inch, that wasn't enough. Because it is perpendicular to that last point, which is right along this line right here. And a quarter of an inch just was not enough. And over here, a quarter of an inch was actually a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and change that. Go back to parameters and go to cut parameters and over here we can change this to 0.1 for the entry and for the exit we're going to go all the way up to an inch hit apply and hit okay now we generate the dirty toolpath and as you can see now the entry is fine and the exit is good as well so now they're almost equal even though we put 0.1 for this and one inch for that we needed to do that because of the shape of our geometry if that was a straight line both can be equal but because that line it has a different geometry, it usually takes that toolpath perpendicular to that geometry. And that's why we need to change the entry and the exit motion. All right. So we've learned how to create all the 2D high speed toolpath in this exercise. Dynamic mill, contour, peel and blend. Area mill we've created in our previous exercise. So you know how to uh, utilize that as well. And the only difference between area and dynamic mill is that area takes smaller cuts. So you can't use the entire flute length uh, when cutting with area mill, you're only going to be taking steps. So that's why for all the dynamic mill operations over here, we utilize the entire length of the tool. But in area mill, we, that's where we go back in the parameters, and we actually change and enable depth cut. And uh, so for area is the only one that you go in and en enable depth cut. For the rest of them, you can utilize the entire uh, length of the tool to uh, create your cuts. And this concludes exercise number four.